Welcome to this video. Here we are going to learn how things like the frequency of the light and the intensity of the light impact things like the photo current collected and the stopping voltage. We'll see which ones influence which and how this all works. First, let's briefly review what the graph represents. Consider the right half of the graph. On the right half of the graph, we are dealing with positive x values. The x-axis tells us the voltage that we've applied to the collector plate C. If we are applying positive voltages, then the collector plate must be connected to the positive terminal of the battery. When we connect the positive terminal of the battery to the collector plate, a slight net positive charge accumulates on the collector, causing the voltage at this point at the collector plate to be positive. Electrons have negative charge. The collector has a positive charge. Hence, every electron that is ejected, even if it doesn't have kinetic energy when it's ejected, even if it's ejected off at an angle, every electron ejected is still curved back around or accelerated toward the collector. If all of the electrons that are ejected, if they all enter the collector, then they are all measured by the ammeter. And hence, when we apply a positive charge to the collector plate, when we apply a positive voltage, we measure all of the ejected electrons, meaning the current measured at C or collected at C, the collector plate, is equal to the current leaving the metal plate M. The current that leaves the metal plate M has a special name. That is the photocurrent. So if you want to know the value of the photocurrent, you just look at the right half of the graph and you trace back the line here to the y-axis. And that value tells you the photocurrent ejected from the metal plate M. Now let's examine the left half of this graph. When we look at the left half, we're dealing with negative x values or negative voltages applied to the collector plate. The way that we apply a negative voltage to the collector plate is by connecting that collector plate to the negative terminal of a battery. When we connect the collector to the negative terminal, a slight net negative charge accumulates on the collector plate. Here's how this impacts electrons. Electrons are negative. The collector plate now is negative. So electrons are repelled away from the collector plate. When the opposing voltage at C is small, only the slowest electrons that are emitted fail to enter the collector all of the rest do enter the collector and they're measured. So the current that we measure is almost exactly the same as the photocurrent. We've only subtracted away a few, the slowest, electrons. But when we apply a large opposing voltage, many of these electrons are opposed so strong, they're repelled so strong, that many of them don't even make it to the collector. Now, only the fastest electrons make it in, and we have a very small current registered at the collector. When the collector has such a huge voltage that it stops all of the electrons, even the fastest, we call that value of the voltage the stopping voltage or the stopping potential. The equation we saw before is that the charge of an electron times the stopping potential is equal to the maximum kinetic energy of electrons 
leaving the surface of the metal plate. If we increase the frequency of the photons, so what's the impact of intensity on the graph that we saw? The intensity of light indicates how many photons strike the surface per second. Low intensity light means we have a smaller number of photons striking uh, a particular area per second. High intensity means we have more photons striking that same area per second. So if there are more photons that strike, then there will be more electrons ejected. So the higher the light intensity, the larger the photocurrent. Remember, the photocurrent is what we see when we look at the right half of the graph. The higher the photocurrent, the higher the line will be on the right side. Let me try and make that flat. So this represents higher intensity light. If the intensity is lower, then the line levels off at a lower value. Lower intensity of light will produce a graph that looks like this on the right half. So, as we see, changing the intensity of light impacts the photocurrent and affects the right half of this graph. What happens if we change frequency? So what happens if we change the frequency of the light, not the intensity? Frequency has a different impact. High frequency light would be something like ultraviolet as compared to blue, which would be lower in frequency. The higher the frequency of the light, the higher the energy of the photons. And the reason is because one photon has an energy equal to Planck's constant times frequency. So this light, which has a higher frequency, also has a higher photon energy. We can represent the higher photon energy by making up some numbers like 20 electron volts and 10. When the higher energy photon strikes the electron, it will be ejected with more kinetic energy. In this case, it would have 16 electron volts of energy left over as kinetic. In this case, we would only have 6 electron volts of energy left over as kinetic. And so the electron would be a little bit slower moving on the right side with lower frequency. The lower the frequency, the lower the maximum kinetic energy of the electron that's ejected. We know that the kinetic energy has a maximum value equal to the charge of an electron times the stopping voltage. That means that the lower the kinetic energy maximum value, the lower the stopping voltage will have to be to halt all of those electrons. We see that the lower the frequency, the lower the stopping voltage. How does that impact our graph? Well, if the electrons have less kinetic energy, they will be easier to stop with a smaller voltage. Hence, the stopping voltage will be a little bit smaller on the graph. And the graph would do something, move up from there. If we have a higher frequency of light shining on the metal surface, then the electrons will have more kinetic energy and it will require a bigger opposing voltage to stop those electrons. So the graph will level off or go to zero at that larger of voltage. So what we find is that the intensity of the light impacts the right half of the graph and the stopping voltage or the frequency of light impacts the left half of the graph. As a final exercise, let's say we conduct two photoelectric effect experiments with the same metal surface. The only difference is that between the two experiments, 
We change the intensity of light and we change the frequency of light. The data that we collect when we apply a wide range of voltages to the collector is shown here for both experiments A and also the second B. Now the first question. In which experiment was light intensity higher? The graph doesn't tell me what the value was of light intensity. What I get from this graph is two things. I get the photo current and I can also get the stopping voltage. I get the photo current from the right half of the graph. The higher the photo current, the higher the intensity of light. So B, graph B, shows a higher photo current. Therefore, in experiment B, we had a higher intensity of light. So I've answered the first question by looking at the right half of the graph. What about the second question? In which experiment was the frequency of light higher? I answer this question by considering the left half of the graph. The higher the frequency, the more energy electrons will have and the more, the larger stopping voltage we will have to apply to halt those fast electrons. In other words, the higher the stopping voltage, the higher the frequency. We see that A has a much larger opposing voltage, B has a smaller stopping voltage, and so the answer is A because the stopping voltage is higher for A. Here's the last question we'll answer as our final exercise. We're shown a graph with some data that has been collected in a photoelectric effect experiment. Draw what the graph would look like if the frequency of the light were lower and the light intensity had been higher. If the frequency is lower, then so will be the stopping voltage. If the light intensity were higher, then so would be the current. So let me mark a, what is it, a lower frequency, so let me mark a lower stopping voltage. Right, that's a lower stopping voltage than this stopping voltage. Now let me mark a, what's the intensity were, uh, if the intensity were higher, let me mark a higher photo current. And then from there, I just connect by following the same kind of shape, something like that.